one thing everyone can relate to is we've all felt the sting of hitting rock bottom in some way, shape, or form. Today, we are going to dive into Nathan Payne and how he went from rags to riches by making one simple flip to his mindset. Today, we are interviewing Nathan Payne, AKA Real Estate Nate from Salt Lake City, Utah. He's right. the owner of Utah Home Acquisitions, coach and mentor of InvestorThrive.com, and he is one of our very own Batch Affiliates. So with further ado, I give you Nathan Payne. Thank you. So who is Real Estate Nate? Okay, what should we know about you when it comes to the journey of becoming a successful wholesaler and real estate agent? So I started um, like, from the bottom, you could say, right? I had some sales skills. I was a door-to-door -door sales rep. I, I I did door to door sales while I was in college and then did a little bit after for like six years. I ran uh, multiple teams. But um, then I was kind of tired of moving around. So, because uh, it's like a very transient lifestyle, right? You go in the summers, you knock in an area. It's not sell. easy. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, you're literally knocking on a door, a random person's door every, every like 10 <laughs> seconds, I guess, if they, they don't answer and, and trying to get a sale. Um, so I did that and then I was tired of moving once I got married. So I, I went right into a uh, real estate. My buddy who, uh, my business partner, Corey, his dad had been doing real estate. And I said, Hey, Corey, like your dad's been doing real estate. You tried in college. You're working at a tech company now. Let's, let's go all in on this wholesaling thing. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. So I guess in a nutshell, it's who I am. I'm just a, a guy with zero knowledge of real estate, went in and f freaking figured it out. So we all know real estate investing. It's not easy, right? It's it's a grind. It's a grind. Wholesaling yeah. is a grind. There's a lot of hustlers out there. So for all the people and individuals that are struggling, right? We all know we go through that struggle. I'd like to know how do you approach failures and setbacks in your business? You know what? I, I love a good failure, you know? Yeah. But really, because it happens all the time. Like it, it's gonna happen. It really is in business. I mean, you point me to the guy who really just knows exactly what to do and never like like fails them. I mean, it's not going to happen, in my opinion. Yep. Amen to that. And learning from your failures too, yeah. right? You know, exactly. if you fail over and over again and not learn from it and apply, exactly, right? Then you got a problem. So yeah. that's key. So you you sent out a bunch of mailers, lost a lot of money, lost a lot of money, brother. <laughs> yeah. Pivoted. Yeah, pivoted. And now and then, we're putting that money in paper click. Even with texting, texting right now for us, we were doing a lot of it, and it wasn't hitting as well as cold calling. So we shut down the texting. We say, hey, let's just put that money into cold calling. It's working better. So you're always improving and growing. And, and who knows, like, uh, you know, cold calling might not hit in six months or, or in a year, yep. then we'll pivot. But if you're not willing to move with the ebbs and flows of the market and like what's working, you get crushed in my opinion. A lot of people, I feel, you know, and I think we've all been victim of it is, is that we, we don't try to fail, right? Yeah. You know, it's or you're like, scared, right? you're scared to even take the leap of faith because you're scared of failing. Exactly. Right? Um, but you got to fail because that's the only way you learn. Right. Yeah, At the end of the day. And that's something I think uh, that's who I am. I, yeah. Like if I hear if you say, hey, Nate, you know, I tried uh, I tried this and it worked for me. I'm gonna go try it. Yep. I'm gonna try it. Like because that's that's who I am. And I meet a lot of people, as I told you, investors I have a coach. So I talk to them and they're in analysis paralysis. They're watching. I've watched tons of videos for two years. And I'm like, well, have you tried? Just getting on the phone, they're like, right. no. And that's what it takes. Yep. And that, that's how I started. I said, when we first started, we just started knocking doors. That's what we did. Because mm -hmm. I, I was good at it. So it's like, let's knock doors and ask people if they're going to sell. We got a deal from that uh, when I first started. That's how we got one of our first deals. Um, so we briefly talked about your mastermind, Investor Thrive. Mm -hmm. um, as a mentor, right, what is the best advice you can give to someone starting out as a wholesaler or a real estate investor? Uh, I would say take take action, imperfect action, right? Yep. You're not going to go out there and make your first cold call. You might, you might get lucky and, and that person want to sell, right? But you got to take action in, t in order to learn. That's, that's what I would say. Cause that's, that's what it takes. You just got to get in there. You got to throw your, your, your hand in the ring or whatever the saying is and, and yep. get, get in it. All out massive action. Yeah. Right. Massive and perfect action. Cause it's never going to be perfect. Perfect. Imperfect yeah. action. Imperfect yeah. action. Yep, I agree. Let's go back in time, right? We, we, I feel like every person would love to just go back in, in time and, and take sure. that knowledge that they have and, and be able to use it, right? So if you were to go back in time um, and give yourself that upper hand, right? 
if you could start all over again, okay, from the beginning, what would you do differently? Um, that's a really good question. It's really hard to say because I feel like what I've learned from those setbacks is, is like has made me who I am, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so if I were to get rid of those things, I don't know if I would really understand what I do now, right? I, so, but okay, let's 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 really try hard. Um, I mean, I love that because it's a process. It's really, it is a right? process. Yeah. You become who 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 you are because of the process that you go through. Yeah, like right? for example, like we were solely wholesalers, right? That's like all we did for a long time. But now we do fix and flips, wholesale rentals, like because we understand the process yep. from going from, I feel like wholesaling is a great avenue, but I don't think that's your end goal. Like you want to do multiple avenues, multiple exit strategies. So, but without doing that, I probably wouldn't have felt comfortable doing venturing out with what we're doing now. So if I had to go back, I probably would have gotten a mentor sooner, like one, like a higher level yep. mentor just so he could, because that's what they're there for, right? They're, they're not going to make you succeed. You have to take the action, but they will help you avoid the pitfalls. Yep, yeah. that's true. And they can help you with your learning curve. Exactly. Right? There's so many people, especially with the internet out there, it's, it's, it's unreal how much you can learn from somebody yeah. um, and, and how much it'll help you at the end of the day with your learning curve, right? You can take what somebody took over 10 years, right? They learned in 10 years. And I'm telling you this because I've done this myself, right? right. 10 years of experience and they put it into a course, right? And you can learn that course. Um, exactly. I would say in what, three months to to a year, right? And then you got to apply it. So instead of going that 10 years and, and going through all the mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. You can learn from their mistakes and take a year, learn it and then apply it, which is, which is amazing. Exactly. So, I agree with that. Um, so I'm a marketer. I love marketing. You're the ultimate marketer. Right there. <laughs> I've been doing it for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to, to the viewers out there um, on putting out content consistently? Like uh, like about wholesaling or like about building yeah, just their own in brand? General, be, yeah, brand building. Because I see a lot of real estate agents and wholesalers, they have this thing in their head where they're like, oh, I want to do YouTube or I want to do TikTok and I want to get information out there, but I don't know where, I don't know where to start. And I, I then have learned that by putting yourself out there, right. it gets you a lot of deals, right? Yeah, it's, it's worked really well. Like uh, it's helped us raise private money like for our deals, like oh, wow. uh, because people are like, oh, Nate, you're, you're doing deals. Like, and when I reach out to them, they trust me because they see that I'm actually doing what I say, right? Yep. Through my posts. I would say if you want to build a brand or, or let people, you just have to get started. Like I started a YouTube channel like six months ago and I just put out things that I thought would help people, like would serve people in um, this industry, like uh, that would help them grow. So I don't know if anyone cares or thinks it's good, but I was like, hey, I think it's helpful. So I think if you start posting or putting out stuff that you think it helped you or helps others and no one watches it, whatever, just stay consistent. It'll It'll work out. Absolutely. And it, and it really gives you credibility and makes you that expert, right? So think about the people that aren't putting out content or don't have a YouTube channel, right? And then somebody searches their name versus Nate's name, yeah. right? When they find Nate on YouTube and they see that he's giving out all this knowledge, right? Who are they going to go with? Yeah. Like luckily Nathan Payne, like there's no one else on YouTube that that name. So I do come up first if you type in my name Yep. and uh, I started the year out with like 40, 39 subscribers and I have 396 right now, nice. which is like, you know, it's not that crazy. Right. But I, I know through consistency, I'm going to get to a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand, like over time it's it, consistency is the key. Correct. Um, so great. Yeah. That's, that's, I believe that everybody out there should be putting out content, pick a channel and then focus on that one channel, get good at it. And then you can, um, hopefully either hire somebody or bring somebody in house to then post it everywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, it's all about your, uh, your omnipresence, right? Yeah. And the more channels you're, you're on, the better. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing the, that I, the cool thing about YouTube as well is if you make a video, you can cut it into shorts or yep. smart, smaller clips and then put it everywhere. So that's what we've been doing. Exactly. You do a show like this, right? You can chop this up a hundred times put it everywhere and put it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you're very strict with family time. Okay. I, I try to call you yeah, man. after work and you just won't do it. Yeah. I try. Um, yeah. So, so what are some of the tips you can give about work life balance? 
Um, I think it's really important in this job to have a good work-life balance because like, you know, sellers could, if you get do leads, they can come in at any time, mm -hmm. but you really don't want to like, uh, give a, give up on your, what you're really working hard for your family to, um, to, you know, lose that. Right. So I, I try to do a hard stop, like where it's like, Hey, and I'll let people know. Right. So I, for my students, I'll just say, Hey, I'm available from nine to five every day. You can ask me anything you need in that time and I'll get back to you. After that, I'll get back to you as soon as I can the next day. So if you set the expectations, it's uh, everyone's okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's that's been helpful. I, I told you, so you you know where I'm at, and yep. and if you tell me your schedule, I'm not gonna you know I'm gonna respect that. So uh, I know it's probably a little bit harder for you know incoming leads. So we have people we hire our leads managers, our acquisitions people, and we say our expectation for hiring you is to get to the leads when they come in, right? Yep. So they take that on, they, they understand what they need to do. So I, I think it's just setting the right expectations for everybody. There you go. There you go. And then that's, I mean, mindset wise, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're all serial entrepreneurs. I get it. Like we want to work 24 seven, 365, because we all have goals. Exactly. I mean, we all want to achieve those goals, right? But can't forget about the outside life and why yeah. you're working, it, right? The, the why, why you're putting in the work. And that helps too, is if you understand your why, of why yep. you're doing all this, like, Money's great and building a legacy and all this stuff is, is what, you know, we're trying to accomplish. But if, at, at the risk of losing what's really important, you got you got to really balance that and don't yep. lose sight of that. Yep. And they always say, right, the saying is you got to have a why that will make you cry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that why, I mean, that why is when you when you hit those failures, it's going to keep you pushing on and on and on and on. For right. Sure. Um, and when you want to give up, you just think about that. Why? And boom, mm -hmm. back to the plate. So the CEO of batch service, all right, he has a non-negotiable. Okay. And that non-negotiable is he will never miss a workout ever, ever. So do you have any non-negotiables in your personal or business? I don't work on Sunday. That's my non-negotiable. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Keep, I try to keep that. That's the Lord's day. I'm, I'm, I have a faith in uh, yep. like a strong faith. So, um, yeah. That's what that's good. Fine. Um, so if you were going to give advice to your younger self, okay, what would that advice be? To, uh, my, my advice to my younger self would have been take more action because hmm. in, in this industry in most industries, you find out like, how do I do more deals? Well, I, I got to do more, right? Yep. That's, that's what it, and I didn't know that when I first started, I was like, you know, I'll work, I'll call maybe when I was cold calling, when I first started a couple hours a day, it's like, well, if you want more deals, you got to get more more calls out yeah so that's that's what i didn't really understand and, and now i understand it's like more deals more action what about with hiring too right more deals more action <sighs> hiring is, is still something difficult right because you can sit down and hire someone that says everything right you you do all your due diligence and they just don't pan out like let me give you an example we i had this guy came to me and says i want to wholesale but i have no money so i was like okay um i could have just spent all this time like trying to get him ready but and we actually did. We trained him for like two weeks before he got the phone. First time he hit the phone, he was shaking. He was really scared <laughs> and he quit the next day. So we put two weeks into yeah. someone who if we would have just put him on the phones the first day and just say, let's see if this guy can hang. It would have saved us two weeks of yep. all us training him. Yep. So. Yep, that's true. And you always got to have a revolving door yeah. of recruits, right? Because 100%. You, have, you bring on 10 one to two is probably going to work out. Yeah. And that's, right? that was how it was for door to door sales too. You could have the, the best slickest looking guy, the sweet, like the slick talker. And you're like, man, he's going to be awesome. But he hits that door and he's scared. He hits something he's not comfortable with and he quits. Yep. So it's really hard to know. Yep. Absolutely. So you're an investor. You like to invest. Yes. It's fun. If you were going to create another revenue stream. Okay. What would you create? So we're actually creating it uh, with some developers. It's a platform where people can post their deals. Like, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Sunday.com. I have, you know? yeah. But like, that's yeah. that's really like where you can, I would say, take this to the next level. Like what, what wholesalers do is they, they go to sellers and they, they say, hey, I'm marketing to you. I would like to buy your house. But if there was a platform where sellers could go to, to be like, hey, I, I, I need to sell. So pretty much Sunday has it, right? But yep. like something like that where it's like, hey, I would like to sell my distressed property quickly. Um, that that would be like the next move because um, we we try to reach out to people, but if there was a place that they could go and they knew about, that's what we're trying to create it's with like our a platform. Community. A community and also yep. where investors can go because there's an issue with wholesaling in, 
is in his dispositions. It's selling your deals. You have to reach out unless you have like a great buyers list or get great connections. You literally have to reach out like cold to hmm. buyers and be like, hey, buy my deal. But if there was a platform where buyers could go to and be like, hey, these guys always have great deals, then your deals would go on the platform and without having to market and try to find people, they would all buyers would always be looking. So Sunday, like I said, is it's, it's, it's got it, but that's like, that's really what would take off. So another revenue stream is a platform for invest buyers and sellers to go to a marketplace. The tech world. I love the tech world. That's it. All right. So this is the part of the show where we learn how Nathan Payne flipped the switch. All right. So this is, this is what the show is all about, ladies and gentlemen. In life, successful people, I believe, okay, they have this pivotal moment, right, uh, where they do something and it literally changes the trajectory of their personal life or their business and they have their breakout year. So my question for you is what was one of the major changes that you made to your life or business that helped you get to where you are today? One of the major changes, like one? One of them. I would say looking at uh, others in the industry as uh, not as not as competition. Because I used to, when I first started this business, it, I, I'm a pretty competitive guy. So I looked at like other wholesalers in my net market and I'm like, I won't forget those guys, right? They're, like they're stealing my deals, right? Oh, wow. and, and I'd look at like as, as competition and I had a, a scarcity me mentality, right? instead of an abundance mentality. But through working with other mentor mentors, I there was like something that switched where I was like, hey, I can do deals with these people. I have great buyers too. Like we can joint venture. I can We can leverage each other's knowledge. And um, once I started not having that scarcity mentality, everything cl clicked for me. And I've been doing JV deals with multiple wholesalers. Um, I've been networking with guys like you and, and start starting, I guess, to broadcast my... Uh, I guess my, my stuff, right? Yeah. Like, Hey, I can help. And, uh, we've actually been able to help tons of people. And, and it's, that's, that's the switch is when you can stop looking at this as a scarcity and there's abundance, there's so many homes out there. Everyone can succeed. And Absolutely. if you help someone succeed, they'll, they'll bring you a deal. For example, I have a student who at the beginning, I helped him for free for like six months. Right. And now after six months, just helping him, he's like, Hey, can I pay for your coaching? He basically was like, Hey, can I jump in? So he paid. And now he, we got two deals that he needs help selling in Cleveland that we're going to sell. So we're splitting JVing on that 50 50 with him. So not only do you pay for the coaching, but we're doing deals together. Mm -hmm. And he just has a five, um, a five home portfolio and he couldn't figure the deal out on terms. So we called them and we're trying to figure out the deal. So this guy potentially as of right now, not only, um, you know, did he get into the coaching, which is beneficial for me and, and him, yep. but we got seven deals we're looking at doing with him. Wow. And that's all from just helping. Correct. Wow. Right? So it's wow. crazy. And if you're a closed mind and not open to that, right? Yeah. If you look at, if he reached out to me and I had the closed mind of being like, Hey man, I'm really busy. I got to make some calls. I got to talk to some sellers. I don't have time for that. Then I, I would not, first of all, not have a good friendship or a relationship with my boy, Mike. He's awesome. But I would, wouldn't look at be doing more. I wouldn't be doing more deals with him. Didn't you go from a moment where you were basically in debt oh, and once you once you changed that, yeah. you were able to just right away get yourself out of debt and do like 70, I think it was $76,000 yeah. in three months? Yeah, it was crazy, man. I was like literally in the depths of despair. Like we were 50, <laughs> about $50,000 in debt and we were, we were worried, right? Because what, what got us in debt, just so people know, is we went nationwide on pay-per-click. Uh, we Google ads, we, we be, just dumped a ton of money oh, and we wow. would get tons of leads. And we were at the beginning, we were stoked. We we're like, Oh, we got all these people want to sell. But when you do nationwide, you're going to get a lot of leads in areas that you can't really sell the deals, right? Even if people want to sell at a discount, it's hard to move them. Hmm. So we got a lot of those deals and we couldn't move them. So as the ad spend kept going, Oof. we weren't able to make the money back and sell the deals. So we got in that position, figured out PPC, by the way, we got it figured out, but in that mo moment, we were really in debt. And then that's when uh, Brandon Simmons, one of my mentors, was like, hey, you got to flip the switch. You got to like look at you – can, you, can, you have great buyers. You can help people. And that's when we did it. And then there was a deal in Colorado that we didn't have a buyer for. Um, but because of networking, we mm. found someone. And he, he was able to buy it. It was a $50,000 deal, right? Boom. Uh, from networking. And then we did some other deals. So 76K, got out of debt. And ever since then, 
Beautiful. We've been doing well. I love it. I love it. So network, don't be closed minded, right? Get out there and, and be with the people in the industry. I mean, you're only going to learn and you're only going to earn working with each other. And, and right? I would add, you want to be around people that have that same mindset. I have noticed that there are people that have that scarcity mentality that don't want to help others. They kind of like want to just have their own back and you don't even want to be around those people it's anymore. True. So that's helped me too. I'm like, don't waste my time with those people. Like you're, you're a go-giver. You're someone that wants to help. We're, we're together, to that. right? So you want to definitely surround yourself with people that are willing to, to give. All right. So this is my favorite part of the show. Okay. This is what nice. I call rapid fire. Okay. Right. So I ask you two questions. Okay. Right. You give me one answer. Okay. I'll try to be as quick as I can. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so cash or credit? Cash. Tesla or Lamborghini? Tesla. Tacos or pizza? Tacos. Do you kill bugs or do you take them outside? I got to kill them. <laughs> gotta get rid of them. Travel to the past or travel to the future? Past. Street smarts or book smarts? Book smarts. Where is your favorite city? Not where you live. I liked Vancouver, Ooh, Washington. Not Washington, I'm sorry. Uh, Vancouver, Canada. Canada. Beautiful. They got really good sushi there. Yeah, beautiful. Last song you have on, on, re on repeat. Last song on repeat? Yep. <clears throat> um... I've been listening to a lot of the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. I like, I, yeah, I like the Lord of the Rings repeat? soundtrack. Yeah, man. When I'm, when I'm at work, I just listen to it over and over again. Right I, now. As of right I've now. never heard that before, but I own every single Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. And The Hobbit. Favorite. So I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah, man. Try that soundtrack. It'll make you it, like it. <laughs> so scale from 1 to 10, how good are you at sports? I'd say I'm an 8. An 8? Yeah. Why you just don't have what Tom Brady has, or no? I'm I'm not a big guy, so it depends what sport. Like in wrestling, I'd probably say like a nine. Oh, there Basketball, you go. maybe a f seven. Okay, but uh, it depends the sport. Got it. I'm pretty Got athletic. It. I feel like crypto or gambling. Crypto or gambling? Yeah. Oh, uh, crypto. Crypto all day. Yeah. Um. So, do you like delivery or sit down at a restaurant? I like to sit down. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So fill in the blank. All right. <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki is the man. The, the man, the goat, <laughs> the goat, the goat. So, book every viewer should read. A book every the <clears throat> slight edge, slight edge. Ooh. That's a good. I, one. I don't think I've read that one. That's yet. a good one. And last one, batch leads or batch dialer. I like batch leads a lot. Batch leads. So don't forget down below, guys. You can get a seven day free trial of batch leads plus five thousand property records on the house. Let's go. So make sure you guys go in the description and grab that. Okay. We're also on Batch TV. We teach you guys how to use batch leads. Okay. So go down below and grab that. So here's the question of the day. All right. So this is the moment at the end of the show where we ask our guests, okay, Nathan Payne. If you were to leave one piece of advice behind to all the young hustlers out there, okay, what word of advice would you leave for them? Um, I actually had a podcast with my buddies, and he said this, so I'm going to take it from him because I really liked it. But he said, the greater the setback, the greater the comeback. So Ooh. that's just like the piece of advice is if you're going to have a failure and you, you overcome it or you're willing to keep going, you're going to be way ahead from that, that setback. Right. So the greater the setback, the greater the comeback. I, I'll take that. It's you, you, There's many ways to say it, but yeah. just keep going. I love it. I don't, love it. Like, if it. For anybody in the audience, don't stop. Just keep learning. Keep going because that's, uh, that's the way you, that's the way you, you go, through, go forward in this industry. Hey, man. I love it. So how do people find you? Where do they find you online? You know, I try to be on every platform, uh, but uh, YouTube, you can check out my YouTube channel. As of right now, it's Nathan Payne, Investor Thrive TV. Mm. May, might change it to Real Estate Nate, Investor Thrive TV, who knows? But as of right now, it's just Nathan Payne. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I have a real uh, Facebook group that's free. It ha teaches uh, a lot of wholesaling and investing for free in it. It's called the Wholesaling Real Estate Mastermind. Mm. I created that Facebook group because I wanted people to have a community where they could ask questions for, for free. And then my, my coaching is, is I kind of like have placed it where it's like, hey, I'm going to give you as much information as you need so you can go on by yourself. But if you'd like someone to kind of help you along your journey and, and help you avoid those pitfalls and, you know, um, shorten the, the learning curve, that's when I'd like to work with you. But I'm not trying to like take people who aren't, um, I guess, willing to take action and, yep. you know. Do what, do, to do what it works but anyway so facebook instagram real estate nate underscore 88 um 
wait, real estate Nate. No, it's real estate underscore Nate 88. I had to make it funky because, uh, you know, there's a lot of real estate Nates out there apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you guys can find me. Uh, th those are the main ones. Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. There's a lot of them. So. Well, thank you for your time, Nate. Yeah, Appreciate man. it. Anytime. It's been fun. It's been good. A lot of education for all the viewers out there.